Hi everyone, Vincent Nguyen here for Android Community and SlashView.com. I'm just about wrapping up my review of the Galaxy Nexus as well as Ice Cream Sandwich, which is Google's new operating system uh, for Android. So I kind of want to go through some of the hardware uh, features that are new on the Galaxy Nexus as well as uh, some of the new features for ICS that I really like so far. So with that, let's go ahead and dig into it. The first thing you're gonna see on the Galaxy Nexus, which is hard to miss, is the gorgeous 4.65 inch 1280 by 720 display. This is one of the best display I've seen in terms of resolution, uh, clarity, brightness, both indoors and outdoors. So it rivals iPhone's retina display in a lot of respects. Um, so the next thing you're going to find on the device, the front of the device, is a 1.3 megapixel camera. It shoots 720p and the quality is really good. So let me bring that up for a second here and show you what it looks like. And that's me. So as you can see, it tracks my face as I'm moving. And if I want to take a shot of myself, it does have zero lag just like the 5 megapixel camera on the back and it does shoot 1080p has a flash and the quality is I would say pretty good but possibly not up to um, Samsung's high standard of uh, output in terms of the best quality picture you can produce right now compared to their 8 megapixel camera all right so the other thing I want to point out, it's got a micro USB for charging and syncing, three and a half millimeter jack, a mic here, and a mic on top. Volume rocker on the left hand side, power button and lock button on the right hand side. There is a 17 megapic, uh, I'm sorry, 1750 milliamp battery on the back. The LTE version on Verizon should have an 1850 uh, milliamp. So hopefully that will um, give it a little bit more runtime. It's super thin, coming in at about 7.96 millimeter in thinness. Weighs a little bit less than the iPhone at 4.9 ounces I believe there you go it's a it's just a gorgeous device overall it feels really good in your hand this configuration is HSPA plus so it'll work on T-Mobile and AT&T it has AWS support for T-Mobile's um, so-called 4G. It has 16 gigabyte of RAM, no external micro SD card slot, so you're stuck with that. Now the LTE version on Verizon is supposed to have 32 gigabyte in terms of memory. So let's go ahead and switch over to uh, talking about ICS. So in the place of the capacitive buttons, are now the virtual buttons. So there are three, the back, the home, and to the far right, will let you know all the apps that's currently running. So if this list gets overwhelming, you can simply get rid of it by any of the apps that are open by swiping it left or right. You can also do that with notification. Uh, unlike iOS 5, you have to, on iOS 5, you have to uh, clear out your, all notifications under that group uh, altogether. Not the case with ICS because on ICS you can individually remove certain notification without um, deleting everything at all at once, which you can if you want to clear everything at once. You have the option of placing either folders or apps in these four slots here. 
the middle will bring up your apps as well as widgets and there's an icon that will take you to the marketplace. Adding and taking away apps to folders is pretty easy. You just simply press and hold and, and add. Pretty simple and straightforward. You can remove folders directly from there or replace it with an app if you wanted to. There are no more search buttons or um, there are no more search buttons on the, on the keyboard itself, but instead what you will get is the search bar across the five panels. Anytime you press on it, you can search for apps, search the web, contacts. There are a number of different configurations that you can set in terms of what you want the result to come back as. So in this case, I can search any of these items. So one other change that you'll find in ICS is to the top right, you'll see these three dots up here. Press on that and it'll drop down your settings. And in this case, you can uh, set for search bar to search for any of these within any of these apps. And since we're there, let's talk about the keyboard. The keyboard has changed quite a bit. It is now a whole lot more accurate than anything else on the market right now, in my personal opinion. You can do a number of things in terms of configuration. You can add on dictionaries, auto correction. Uh, in this case, I want it to be extremely aggressive. Under advanced setting, you can do a number of these other things as well. Vibration settings, uh, suggest contact names, pop up, dismiss, delay. Just, you're, you're just gonna absolutely have to take my word for it that this is one of the best Android keyboard out there rivaling um, iOS 5's keyboard. Voice dictation on ICS is just utterly amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and test something out for you here. I know I've done this before, but I kind of want to show you again how amazing this is. This is a test voice dictation for my Galaxy Nexus review, period. I want to share with everyone watching this video that the voice dictation is super amazingly and then I can pause and then it'll wait for me. But in this case, since I have it going, it's just going to keep on going and going. And as you can see, I'm just sitting there. It'll just wait and pause for me to continue. And if you're done, you can hit done. You can also add more languages if you wanted to. And that's how it works. And at some point, you're going to hit a max limit and it's going to tell you. Web browsing on the Galaxy Nexus is just amazing, especially with the 720 display. This is one of the fastest browsers on the market right now. Pinch zoom. Unfortunately, the Galaxy Nexus isn't going to launch with Adobe Flash until later this year, which is confirmed by Adobe. You can have up to 16 tabs. Once again, if you don't want something saved, you can swipe to get rid of it. You have bookmarks, options, history, save pages. Once again, the three dots will bring up the submenus. In this case, 
New Incognito tab, history, save page, pages, and settings. From there, you can set up however you want the browser to behave. The gallery has gotten a, a makeover as well. So in this case, this is something that I'm curious about as to why it takes a little bit longer to load up all the albums. Uh, to the top left are all the pictures that you've taken with the camera. As you can see, I've taken a lot. And once it's up, it loads extremely fast. And then you can scroll through all the images and then select whichever right below it. It does dump in all my pictures from Google Plus as well. Options. And then from here, you can also take a picture. So while we're here, I just want to make a quick note about the camera app. It's kind of clumsy, if you will, to, to select between the different options. I would rather just to be able to pick on the display versus having to hit this and then select whatever I want. Uh, you can swivel the camera around to the front facing, swivel it back, different options, flash on, off, on the white balance, scene mode and other options. There's a panorama option here as well. In the video option, you can turn on the flash, turn off, different effects, time lapse, what resolution you want to shoot it at, and your white balance here, flash mode. Okay? So contacts is no longer just contacts, right? Uh, Google has changed it to where it's now become more of a hub than anything else. And as you can see, Google Plus is extremely prominent. These are my circles within Google Plus. And then from there, I have my contacts, that's me, people that I frequently um, contact the most. So let's say I want to um, look at my doctor, Allison Swartz. She's our uh, dentist. So I can either add her to my favorite, which is star her right here, make changes. I can connect her to different, uh, in this case, to my circle in Google Plus, her address, notes, and whatnot. Scroll through the list. So these are people in my favorites, people I contact the most. You can even go as far as set up your accounts, what you want to be, uh, what you want to show up, your different display options. It just works really well. So to wrap up this review, I just want to make one quick suggestion on how Google can improve the facial recognition. As you can see there, I was able to unlock it pretty quickly by just sticking my face in front of the front facing camera. And for the most part, it's extremely accurate. Now, I would love it if Google can improve on allowing me to have multiple profiles saved. In this case, I had my sunglasses on and as you can see, it doesn't work. So this is a problem when you're wearing sunglasses while you're driving or if you're wearing glasses at home. It just won't work. I hope that this will get passed on to us down the road as a uh, feature upgrade. So overall, the Galaxy Nexus is one of the best Android phone of 2011 and possibly the first six months of 2012. It's got a beautiful display, really good camera, feels great in your hand, powered by Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich, 
Now speaking of an ice cream sandwich, it's grown up, it's ready for the mass, it's cohesive. It could possibly end up being one of the best uh, mobile operating system out there next to iOS 5. I highly recommend it. If you have an Android phone now that you're not tied to a contract, I recommend waiting for the international version or go ahead and get it from Verizon when it comes out. This is Vincent Wynn for Slash Gear and Android Community. I hope you've enjoyed this video review of the Galaxy Nexus and ICS as well as all my other reviews. So make sure to uh, head on over to slashgear.com for my full review of uh, this device.